you are watching the Hustle and Know Entrepreneurial Experience. We are an entrepreneurship book club moving into the podcast world. We read books relating to entrepreneurship and professional development and then discuss it with you guys and what we think. Joining us today, we have Joseph Warren, co-owner of Financial Planning HQ. We got Sean Townley over here, consultant, speaker, geek, entrepreneur, a whole nine yards. My name's Julie. I'll be your host today, who is a passion for knowledge. And today, we're going to be reading the book, Worth Every Penny, by Sarah Petty and Aaron Burbeck. So... Without further ado, let's get started. So, first question, guys. In one word or sentence, give me your synopsis of the book. If you were the author, what is the mo main point you'd want to take away from this book? Who's first? <laughs> Any takers? I'll go. Okay. <laughs> This book is <laughs> How to Be Bougie. Boutique equals bougie. <laughs> I like that. Boutique equals bougie. I agree. I agree. Okay, Joseph, you're going to try to fit one word or sentence? One word? Or sentence, yeah. Or sentence. I can probably do a sentence. One word is pretty much impossible for me because <laughs> I love to talk. But I will say that my sentence, my long sentence for this one is... Mm, let me think about that. Hold on. Okay, okay, I'll go. I'll oh, go. Wait, go ahead. Yeah. I think. <laughs> so, I mean, if I had to, like, narrow it down, I feel like the main concept of this book is basically what the title says. You're worth every penny. Do not discount or yeah. undervalue yourself or your product ever, pretty much, ever. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to taint your brand. So it's all about you knowing your worth and not charging like little because then you're going to just be compared to like a big company or anything you're a boutique you're bougie like sean said <laughs> and when you're bougie the second part of that is that you offer higher prices because you offer higher service it's all about customer service yep you're going to take that extra mile because you can't offer the lower price but make it worth them paying that price by knowing who they are. So, I mean, that was more than one sentence. That was way more than a sentence. <laughs> All right, Joseph. That was the wrap of it. Okay, what about you, Joseph? <laughs> okay, so piggybacking off of that, it's, yeah, instead of trying to be a value or discount brand, which people will not associate with value, they'll be like comparing you to Walmart or the Amazon where they can get the cheapest merchandise. Instead of doing that, go for increasing the value you give to your clients the right clients, right? Don't work with everybody, but work with people who get what you're doing and are really aligned with it and do everything you can for them. Like try to try to surprise them and wow them so that they keep coming back and they'll pay fees that are higher. So you charge a higher fee, but you do even higher value for your clients. And then you become like this highly valuable brand and everyone associates you with, you can charge a lot because you're doing an amazing job. Exactly. Perfect, Joseph. Very good. <laughs> How many sentences was that? <laughs> I don't know. I was not counting. <laughs> but that's okay. Okay, so moving on. Um, tell me what you liked best about the book and what you disliked about the book. I can go on this one. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. I'll start with what I like about the book. I think the premise is really smart. Um, too often people try to like emulate what big companies are doing, like they're a big company. And I think that's very wrong. If you're a small business or an entrepreneur, you should go for what makes you unique and what makes you different. And you can get strategic um, advantages by doing what it says, by charging more and finding the right people instead of trying to work with everyone. I've lived that before, like where I was trying to appeal to every single person as a new financial advisor. And you'll find people who just want to get every single bit of your time and attention and value out of you for like the lowest amount possible. And I, it just, it, I hate even just thinking about it, just, just remembering it. It's like a gross feeling. So if you don't want those people, those people should go to Walmart. They should go to Amazon. I know it sounds, <laughs> but they should go somewhere else because you're not, that's not what you're offering. You're trying to offer a lot of value. So I love the premise, good ideas. 
it's a little bit repetitive because it's sort of this one idea of charge what you're worth, which I already agreed with. So in my case, I may have been like preaching to the choir, um, but a little bit repetitive, but some of the stuff is good. Like I like the marketing and things like that. So I would say the only thing that I didn't like is just, they really hammer the point home. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. There was like, I agree completely. Very repetitive, but I mean, like you said, they're trying to really nail it into your brain. So you don't forget. How could you forget? Never forget. <laughs> okay. What about you, Sean? Things I like. I mean, it is a fairly short book. It probably was probably about half, twice as long as it needed to be for me. I mean, there were some good stories in there. I know you like good stories, Julie. I like a good story. We all like good stories. They, you know, concentrating on some of the, the other owners and, and what they were kind of doing, that was kind of cool. I like, I like to hear those types of stories. But they told you it in a chapter, they gave it to you in a conclusion, and then they had an epilogue about the same thing. It was kind of weird, I mean, how much they were hammering at home. And for God's sake, get it on audiobook. Nobody reads anymore. But I, but I thought it was a good book. I, it was a solid four star for me. I, I think a lot of it makes sense to your point, Joseph. You are a value. And if you're going to be a small business, you need to do it better than everyone else. This is clearly, your market is not the value minded. You don't want the coupon people. You don't want to kill yourself for a, a small margin like the big boys do because they're going to outwork you, out hustle you, out discount you every time. So I do like that. I do like the fact that, look, I'm charging a premium, but you're getting a premium product. And here's how to do it, right? Build that database, really work on the relationships. I mean, literally know their kids' names, ask them about them, you know? And, and I think that that's right. Don't try to cold call. Don't do that mass email thing we were talking about earlier. Oh, my God. <laughs> that, nothing, nothing says less personal than that. Mm -hmm. but make it warm and fuzzy. It should be warm and fuzzy. And people should be, what did they, what was the word they used? You know, just Google and all over you, you know, like, oh, they can't wait to tell their friends about you because you, you do such a great job. I, mean, I think that's top notch stuff. Mm -hmm. I agree completely. And going back a little bit to what you said, Sean, they, she actually is offering her book for free on her website. So something, well, because in the book, she had a lot of like, visit worth every penny book.com slash and then whatever. So um, so I wanted to look into one slash identity standards and every, when I typed it in there, it kind of rerouted you to a different domain name called like joy of marketing or something. And then from there it was like, we'll give you the book for free. Just pay for shipping, enter your information here. <laughs> so, and shipping was like 10 bucks. So you're still paying like 10 bucks for a book. Um, I think I paid but, it on Kindle and got it, you know, right, right then. So. Very true. Um, but I was like a little disappointed that those links no longer existed because in the book she promises like go and check on this website for additional resources and then now she doesn't offer them anymore. Like that's kind of a little misleading to have that in the book. Not that that's like a huge deal breaker, but I was looking forward to seeing that information. So, um, but I really did like, like you were saying, Sean, the uh, database. And I went at first when um, we had watched another book review to see what we were going to like about it and if we agreed with them. And she had mentioned, you know, don't lower your, like, you can't have a reasonable price, basically, is like how I felt when I listened to her book review. And I was like, that's bullshit. <laughs> right? I was immediately like, no, I don't agree with that at all. After reading this book, I definitely understand more of the concept behind it. It's not saying not to offer reasonable prices, but make sure not to try to compete with the big box retailers. Because like Sean said, you were hunt, not like hunt 10 times out of 10 going to lose that battle. Mm -hmm. um, and she gives several examples in the book about how people who had started off doing well, like marketing well, making it seem like they're custom and unique like a yoga studio or pilates studio and this girl was doing all right and then this like competitor built a pilates studio like a big um gym that offered pilates classes so then she started discounting her um classes and 
to the point where now she was like kind of in the red and the people that were attracted to her new business are no longer even her target customer and they didn't even see the value in what she was offering. Even though her Pilates classes were more high end, it automatically puts like a, something in people's brains, like whatever the price is discounted, it should always be that price. Yeah. So it's kind of like um, people are willing to pay more when the product or service is worth more, but you have to relay that message of how it is worth more. And so that's the other thing, like Sean was saying, build the database. Like you have to do over the top customer service, basically like literally have a database, whether it's like an Excel or like some kind of technology platform where you have clients names, you have what they like to do for fun, what their kids names are, if their kid's going to graduate, they give exam. And so you then now even can send them little gifts. So like one of the examples she said was, oh, if you know that one of your client's daughters is about to go off to college, you can send the little daughter a little college goodie bag, you know, basically taking that extra time to offer that extra service to say, I care about you as a person, mm -hmm. not, not just like, you're just income to me. Like, no. And that's, I think her main point of like boutique is to be specialty is to do that over the top customer service to where they're your friends. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, that one example where the lady who sold dresses, right. She sold the dress and then later on she got like uh, some like, you know, jewelry and she's like, Oh, this would go great with that. So she just sends it to her. Right. She send, sends yeah. her a bracelet that yeah. matches that dress would have matched it really well. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Or, you know, you can use these tactics also in like your marketing. So for example, um, for the author, she had a photography business and she offered like, like a, this frame with like a $200 certificate for a photography session to one of her clients who already had taken photography lessons with her. I think it was a stockbroker or something. And what that client did was gave that present to one of his clients. So it's like, but she intentionally gave that gift for him to give to a client. But point being is like, she already had a trusted customer client. They call it like forever clients basically. And then now she was able to build new clients by giving that away. So she always, she says too, like if you're going to want to, discount or offer deals don't ever discount prices instead do added value so instead of saying 50 percent off say if you buy 500 dollars worth of product we'll throw in something bundling. else for free yeah bundling yeah. bundling yeah so i really like that as well so good concepts overall in the book good concepts so mm -hmm. i liked it yeah okay and we're having a quick session today. So <laughs> last and but not least is tell me something that you didn't know before and give me an example of how you're going to apply it into your life. Joseph, you look like you want to go first. <laughs> Love it. I took notes on this. My favorite, absolute favorite, and I think it was like a contractor or something. He wrote a handwritten note to his people like for his marketing like i really love that idea and it really fit with the book's idea of being very personalized in everything you do so you put your 100 percent of yourself into your products your marketing and everything and i thought it was a cool idea to write like a handwritten personalized note either a thank you note or it could be like a marketing letter to like you know we know this is going on right now these might be some concerns um i love that because it shows that even something that's super old-fashioned like um, a letter, a handwritten mail, you can make it 100% you and make it work. And they, they also talked about a used bookstore. That's something you would think of as like, that's obsolete possibly, right? But if you do it correctly, and you put 100% of yourself into it and you spotlight local authors and have events and stuff like that, you can make that work too. So really anything's possible if you do it correctly and you mm -hmm. personalize it. Only. And so are you saying you already did that? You already started doing thank you notes? Or is that something you're going to do? I've always done thank you notes, but I'm going to start looking at possibly like handwritten, more handwritten letters and marketing and stuff like that. Because I think that's cool. Um, I love that. Great. Um, and what about you, Sean? 
I don't know that it was something I learned, but I definitely got the feeling that I want to be narrow and deep more so than shallow and broad, right? So, and and that's one thing that I realized in doing my podcast. I only have a few episodes out. Is I'm too I'm too broad right now, and I and I need to niche somehow. I need to figure out. I mean, even though everybody uses money, I, I'm not trying to have the whole world as an audience. Uh, so, so I need to kind of find a, a niche to where I can get a little bit deeper. Now, in the beginning, it's going to be about, you know, it's money basic. So it's going to get real basic. I mean, to, you know, I mean, kid style almost, you know, there's not going to be any cursing or any of that kind of stuff. And you know, there's not going to be a lot of adult conversations. But I think once I get through the first year or so, I, I might add a concept where I bring in people like Joseph, you know, other money folks to start talking about, Hey, what it's like to, to, Hey, what's a financial advisor? What do they do? How do they make their money? How, you know, how, how can they help you? That'll be a little bit more 201 type stuff, but, but that'll be more of an interview kind of like what we do here where we're engaging and, and, and that kind of stuff and have different people on this first phase is really just, it is going to be a little bit wider and I, and I need to figure out how to, to make it a little bit more bougie. I'm not a really a bougie kind of guy, but, but I, but I know that there's a market out there and I just got to kind of narrow down on it. And then I can get deep on that once I have a better understanding. And I'm hoping that, you know, maybe it's a two-parter. With Clubhouse, I can learn how to to, to get some of that feedback right away. We'll, we'll, I'll be saying a lot of the same things, get that feedback, and then be able to come back and say, okay, here's the feedback I'm getting. Let me start sharing it and, and really build that network out as I go. Yeah, for sure. Make that big. Huh? Start that database. Yeah, start that database. Exactly. I mean, and it's gonna it's difficult, I get you know, to know every single little thing about every single one of your clients. Like I I don't think she's expecting that. Um, but that's why she says building the database and at least have it jotted down so you can refer to it. Or if you end up eventually having um employees, you know, having them figure that out too. But regardless, that's another thing she says is like, you have to make sure your employees embody the same, um, what's the word? Passion, passion. It's got to have passion. Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to hire just somebody to do a job. You need somebody who's going to you know, continue to be the face of the company. Exactly. They're always representing your brand. So that is actually a good lead into mine because I, not that I didn't know this before, I knew this already, but what I want to do is, um, or something that she mentioned in the book that you really need to do with your boutique business is to create and have a good identity, right? Which basically means your branding needs to be on point. And I know like Gary V, my fave, usually says like, um, you know, just start putting stuff out there. Who cares if it's not the highest quality, yada, yada, yada. Well, she says a little different. She's like, if you're going to um, basically market yourself as a boutique business, it needs to be the highest quality. Like, invest in good photography or in good website design. Like, you don't want to have, like, a eh, off-looking design because it's going to give you an off feel. Because you're supposed to be the best of the best experts. So you got to look the best. So, which I see where she's coming from. Um, so what I wanted to do is, or one of the things she also says is to create a standard manual. So have like for your business, like literally a manual that says this is the logo that will be used like exactly. And you can give it to, let's say like, if you're going to have, um, sponsor an event or something, and they're going to use your logo, you send them that manual with all your lists and regulations on how to use it. So that way you can ensure that your branding will be consistent across the board. So I really did like that. But what I'm going to do with that is get our logo redone for Hustle and No. Yay! Yay! I do love our current one, but I think that we could do a much better branding with it. Um, so I'm going to work on that and create that for us. Yay! I'm so excited. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Is there any other tidbits, things we want to let the audience know about the book? It's cool to be bougie. 
It is cool. Unless it's, <laughs> it's not. Until it's not. But like Joseph said earlier, same concept. You do want to provide that over-the-top customer service, but you have to beware and do not be afraid to cut some people off because some people will you'll want to provide that service to, but they will keep milking it and milking it and not really providing anything. They won't really purchase much or anything. So in that case, you do have to be open and honest and get them out. Nicely. <laughs> Nicely, of course, of course. <laughs> um, let's see. I guess that's all we pretty much covered the main points. I mean, in all honesty, audience, you probably don't really need to buy the book. That was pretty much all. <laughs> Well, <laughs> there, goes our, there goes our hope of the, the authors coming on to pull on our show. Um, no, that's not true. Well, like I said, the links don't work. So if you want, but at the same time, if you do want to check this book out, it is for free. It is on her website. Well, it redirects you, but wortheverypennybook.com redirected i think into joy of marketing or something like that you just have to put in your address and your credit card and it charges you ten dollars shipping but the book is technically free and she will send it to you so if you want to check it out check it out it's not bad at all and it's a really easy read fun read and yeah that's pretty much it yeah joseph you <laughs> but it's from the book it's like it, working with you should be like an unforgettable experience so people like want to talk about it that, that would be the main thing i take back the, all those sentences before that's, fine. <laughs> that's a good point she does give a lot of examples in the book also tailored to the type of business so she give if you're a spa if you're a restaurant she does give you actual ideas of how you can um market and things you can do to make your customers feel special. Yeah. So if you want those extra ideas, you can check out the book. <laughs> yeah. We mentioned a few of them, but yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today for Worth Every Penny. You can check this is a book again if you didn't remember what it looked like. And don't forget that hustle beats talent when talent doesn't hustle. We'll see you next time. Bye.